welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are talking about the prepping mistakes to avoid. Whether you're new to prepping or you've already been prepping, there's the things that we do that we shouldn't do or things that we should do properly to avoid the mistakes and basically they make the best of our time and our efforts. So first, one of the things, guys, I think is very, very important to understand what exactly are you prepping for. I know there is people there that generally just start prepping and start just buying random stuff because they feel they're prepping. That's kind of okay. It gives you this urge that you want to buy stuff to prep, but you need to understand and establish what exactly are you prepping for. We started as a family prepping for things pre-Brexit and basically when the things were a bit unsure and we didn't know whether this food supply chain going to affect and how is it going to affect us in UK. So things initially I started with is things like what could not live without if suddenly we couldn't import this from Europe. And for us, for myself, it was more like oh, olive oil is tinned tomatoes because a lot of this is imported and we don't produce this in the, we might produce this in UK, but majority of the stuff is imported. So my thoughts were whatever I can't get here, if I can't get it from abroad, let's buy this now and be prepared. So for many of you, depending which country, because you viewers guys are could be in any part of the world and you've got to understand what things affect you. So if you live in the States, for example, in America, you get, well, there's tornadoes and hurricanes. We touch food, don't really get them here in the UK, but we prepare for different things. We not say we prepare for natural disasters, but we're preparing at the moment, I'm saying that I'm preparing, speaking for myself, probably and many others, is for price increases, for things like the new world order, the things that are to come. Yet you might live in the things where there's a flooding, you might live in a different area where there's different disasters, like in earthquakes, and where you are potentially could be in a position when you're stranded in your home for like three, four days. So this is, this is the main point, guys, is to understand and know what are you prepping for. So as I said, for ourselves, we live in UK, technically we live actually in Wales, but because we don't have or don't expect hopefully natural disasters, though we have had a couple of earthquakes in Wales not that long ago and one fairly recently, um, we are preparing for uncertainty there is to come. So uh, is, the, is the food shortages, obviously this, um, the weather conditions that affect the things and the food that's coming into the country and of course the new world order and the new things to come. So it doesn't always have to be food preparedness, don't forget, but the, the main point is guys understand and sort of get this in your head and pick a thing what, you, what you're preparing for. It's You could be preparing for the um, end of the world, that's absolutely fine, but you know, many people do, and the zombie apocalypse is whatever it is that you guys are doing, whatever you feel that you need to, and it is have to come from within. You've got to, um, and I know it's a very personal thing, and many people just, you feel it, and you know what you're doing it for, but understand this in your head, and kind of have this clear image of what it is that you're prepping for. Second point is, it's not allocating a budget. Um, we started, and I've been buying this, and this, and that, and soon you know you suddenly become in red because you don't actually realize, I think, if you go shopping, if you don't allocate the budget, every time you pop into the shop, you might pick up this, pick up that, I'll pick up that. And suddenly like, oh, okay, you spent 20 pounds, but then you might go to the shop a week again next week and you'll pick up another 20 pounds worth. But if this is not allocated in your budget, if you don't physically have this disposable income to spend this money, then this is the danger. When, to be fair, after we passed the Brexit stage and I started preparing a little bit harder, um, it's very easy, very easy to get carried away and I go to the shop and I buy stuff and I have this urge to go in and buy some more, as the preppers do. It feels like it's consumed as your body and you feel like you want to get more and you feel like, oh, I only done this like a couple of days ago, but I feel I have to go and buy some more, yet the bank account won't allow you and then you end up going in red. And it happened to me. So the second point is, guys, be very, very clear on your budget. And I almost want to say, don't just go and like stick it and um, not stick it. Sorry, don't stick your preps in the end of the shop. I always feel like go in separate prep shops separately, so you know exactly how much money you're spending on your preps and allocate this budget to spend on food and other things that you're prepping, like other items that you're prepping for. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna look, sorry, I've got my list down below. The is organization, guys, it's organizing yourself. And again, I found myself initially, is this, 
you sort of, you prep in, you get this urge, like I keep saying, because I think it is an urge and everything is up in the air and you want this, you want this and you want time to spend this and that. But you need to get yourself together and organize yourself. Specific times is a budget aside, but specific times, the things you will do. Say, if you have done your prep or shop, decide, are you gonna put this stuff away? Say, for example, like rice and beans and whatever else you buy, dry goods aside, and then do your vacuum pack in once a month. Or are you gonna do this in the end of every shop? So basically have your plan and decide what works for you, what is best to fit your family, how you're gonna act and deal with all this extra stuff and information and stuff that you need to file away and the process and write the dates on. But understand, but it has to be personal to you. So planning is the key, okay? Organization and planning, right? Next thing is the food rotation. It's really, really important, right? Of course, guys, the date on the tins that we have, it's not 100% date, it's the best before. Things will last past the date by years. However, the dates are there are so important, so you can actually rotate the tins. Because last thing you want, guys, if you're preparing for the few years, last thing you want to do is, for example, I've got a bunch of beans, and one of them is dated like three years ago, and one of them dated three years in the past. I don't really want to eat the beans now that are dated three years in the past because I have the one that's three years out of date. So writing the dates on the tins it's really important and should help you rotate. You need to rotate the stock. If you follow the channel, you might see my cupboard that was behind me there. That was a pre-prepping cupboard. So this is before I really started prepping properly. There was a stuff been shoved in there and it's been out of date and something's gone rusty and moldy and horrible. But this is very important, guys. Especially if we are with all, whether it's limited budget or not, it doesn't matter. When we spend the money on our food and the preps, it's very important not let it go to waste or to spoil. So rotating that basically will means that if you buy the new something, new tin of something, put it to the back and take the oldest one. So that means you're never really going to end up with a stock that's really old and the new stuff still sitting there. So just trying to understand that and develop a strategy that works for you. Um, it all depends how you store the stuff, but it, it does take a little bit of working out unless you have a proper pantry and you, you've got tons of space, you can lay this out, it's really easy. But if you are like ourselves, we have pantry there, pantry there, cupboard there, cupboard there, it's a little bit harder. So think about this and make sure you get this right and organized. Right, next thing is, uh, oh yes, of course, one of my, let's say favorite ones, but it's concentrating in on like, I know that, many, many preppers use bagging in and bagging out, right? So bagging in means you concentrate on staying in, in your own house, in your own property, in your own land, and staying and basically protecting yourself and doing the best you can. Bagging out means when you get the fuck out of the dodge and basically go somewhere. And I know many people concentrate on um, bagging out. So like, oh yes, if I have to live in the forest, that's fine. It's honestly, it's totally personal choice. And it also kind of depends on where you live. Because if you live in the middle of London, you can't particularly go say, I'm going to bug out, bug out where? Well, in the shop next door. You can't. So you don't have a particularly a lot of uh, land around you, so you can't bug out. And I know, and I've kind of caught myself a little bit also thinking, oh, let's buy a tent. Let's do this. And of course, I buy this because it's a good thing to have anyway. Don't get me wrong. Bugging out, it should always be an option. You should be prepared for this because we are preparing for this. However, do not make this as a priority because if you think about it, guys, whatever I'm preparing for, um, again, it, it will be different for your own scenario. That doesn't really involve me leaving my house because if I have to leave my house, then my neighbors have to leave the house and the whole village have to leave houses and we're all gonna be bugging out in the same, say, forest or the same place. So it's not really gonna pan out that well. And it's not like it's a bunch of you gonna, you know, set up a little kelly kettles and you have, see, it's a hundred people in a village. We're all going to a little field or there. We're all going to bunch together and light up our kelly kettles together. It just doesn't, it doesn't work for where we are. So it might not work where you are. And again, the, 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 the worst case scenario, something has to happen for you to leave the house. And to be fair, if this position situation is happens when you have to leave the house, it means it's pretty bad shit's happening. And to be fair, it's one of those things like, do you really want to be dealing with this situation or not? If you see what I'm saying. Um, so for me, it's the 
priority is, is to make sure we stay home, we have everything we need at home, and if we can't stay in the house, then for the outside space, for the garden, have the beds, still have your kelly kettles, have the outside cooking area, but I'm not certainly concentrating any more than I have already on, you know, let's build a shelter in the woods, because no, guys, if we got to all migrate out, we're all going to be migrating out and it's going to be hell for leather going in the woods and it's just, just not going to work unless you are literally living in some rural area. So please just think about this carefully. Take in account your, um, your surroundings and where you live and just understand that if you have to leave your house, so does everybody else. And you're all going to probably going to head for the same place which is not going to be so fun, like, oh yeah, let's fire up and let's build our tent and build this, because people are hungry, some people, especially not preppers, are going to be straight out for you, so just think of that one, okay? Right, next thing is um, having the stuff, sorry, I'm just like, the light is blinding me, it's having your items, you know we're prepping stuff, when I did the video before, having your cookers, your hobs, whatever it is we have, and again, it's not knowing how to use it or not, testing this prior to the situation. Um, again, we buy, and I've bought many, many things, little fire things, little hobs, everything. We've pretty much covered every aspect to what I feel that we need if I need to cook off the grid, but still in my house. But nonetheless, there's still some things I still haven't tried and haven't experimented. It all takes time and also takes money because whether it be in wood or any sort of charcoal, anything they use to fire something, it takes time and effort, but it's very important, guys, that you know if you have just two items there, just know how to power them up, know how to use them, know how to boil the kettle on it, if, if you know what I mean, not sort of trying to sound a bit basic, but understand the tools that you have and to do test runs so you know how to use them and you know how they work. Right, next thing, guys, is storing your preps in one place. I know you guys in States, you're so lucky having, um, some of you, majority, I don't know, but having the, um, the basements with the preps or whatever rooms you guys have, like sheds, whatever, um, whatever place you guys have it, but you can have a massive room of your storage just for your jars and your tins, and I think they're just amazing. In UK, we don't really get this luxury unless you want to convert one of the rooms. Some people have cellars. Uh, but generally more so than not in the newer houses. We don't have this luxury. Some people convert garages because they're normally full of rubbish, but some people don't have garages at all. But the main thing is that um, I don't think it's a good idea to keep your preps in the same place. And I'm very, not say very secret, but I would, I know guys you're asking, where do I store my, show my pantry? I don't have a pantry per se. I have a big enough kitchen. I have things in my kitchen, but I do keep my preps logically in the different location for many many reasons um firstly being because i am in a public eye if you wish if god forbid anything happens i don't want somebody to know yeah i've seen this i know exactly where this is i don't want that to happen but nonetheless if somebody gets a whiff even if you're not in a public eye that you are a prepper you kind of if you store things if you put the eggs in one basket people automatically will check your garage first and probably the tiny little room somewhere they'll just go through and see and if they see something laid out nicely on the shelf like okay, that's it that they will have it all and i understand once somebody's in the property whether they going to rummage through the rest of the things it's a different matter but i don't want to make things easy and i think it's not right to make things easy even though guys storing stuff on the ground floor for example it could be a flood, it could be many things that will affect specific rooms. So do you see what I'm saying? But then if you keep your preps in the different areas, different rooms, you kind of safeguard in a little bit. You can lose some of your preps, but you won't lose all of them. And that's why I make a choice, constant choice, or making sure that I store my preps, at least a selection of them, and mixed selection in the different rooms of the house, hidden out of the eye, but generally out of just out of the principle that if something happens to say a garage or somewhere else at least I have some preps and food stored away in the different places where we'll potentially could save you from going hungry if something happens to one or the other of your rooms okay another thing guys is part of this kind of is getting scared and it kind of goes up with my semi last thing it's being exhausted and overwhelmed. I've gone through this stage, I've only started doing the prepping thing for the past, 
about probably about four months, four, I, th I would say four months, okay? But when you, the getting scared part, there's a lot of information out there and you've got to be careful what do you watch and what do you take in. There is many, um, there's many things there on the YouTube beat, on the news there, they're really pounding it down. And I've watched some, I follow some, but after a little while, especially if it's every day, every other day, it gets you bloody down, it gets you down. And I think that makes you feel more scared. And when you're scared, you feel vulnerable. I want to understand what's happening in the world and the whole situation, but I do want to be constantly beaten down every day. And I'm saying to you, Follow the news, follow the YouTubers, understand what's happening, but don't do what I did and constantly do this every day and you just basically sit there and like go, like, oh my God, we're all gonna die. Maybe, but don't do this to yourself constantly because there is messes with your mind, it messes with your mental health and it's just not, not healthy. And the part with other parties, they said, don't get carried away. Again, I've done the video a little while back and I had my little panicky situation I was just I feel I felt overwhelmed after watching all those videos and that just felt it's got on the top of me and I just didn't know how to shift it apart from just turning like and just not watching any news nothing nothing at all for about a week because you get overwhelmed and you lose focus and the focus is so so important I didn't know believe this like I didn't know what to do with myself for the time when I didn't watch the stuff because I'm like, but oh my God, what is happening? What if we like, like get blown up right now? Do you know what I mean? But it wasn't good for me. It was not healthy. It was not, it was just not good. So like devote the time, maybe devote the time to your prepping part and involve this into that because watching this every day, every day for 20 hours, 20 hours? 20 minutes some of the videos are horrendously long and they're all like scaremongering be it the truth or not but if you can't take it mentally and I don't think anybody really can take this without potentially having some sort of deeper effect on your uh, mental health I suggest just take it easy know where you stand you know exactly what's happening in the world follow what's happening but don't like do this whole board like I did it because they're just not good and they didn't make me feel that good and I had to take like time off and it was just I've never been in this position before and I felt like I was out of control on my own preparedness situation do you know what I mean it was just not good anyway I stopped rumbling on this but please just take this on board and understand that too much of something is never a good thing and watching whatever's happening right now too much of it if you binge on all of them talking about the same thing from different angle it's not healthy and it's not good. Right, and the last thing guys, last thing I promise you, it's basically, it's telling other people that you're a prepper. It's just, it's bad. And I've done this, we had the neighbor around and I told the, you know, we're preparing. That was the early stages, which is, you know, kind of okay because people might forget. But when you openly tell people that you're a prepper, you're preparing, I think is a really, really bad thing because again, if you say your family knows, your friend knows, you think, oh, friends and family, what are they going to do? But if, like, SHTF situation, who do you think the people are going to come for? They're going to come for you because you're friends and family. So if you're able to prepare and basically have enough money to support yourself and your friends and family, absolutely fine. There's no problem. Just tell your friends and family you're prepping that you just have to store, like, 10 times the amount of food to cater for friends and family come to your, to your door. But like, if this happens, if you don't have enough money, then you, you're not going to say, well, you can't say no. So generally, your family, maybe your close family is absolutely fine. They would know because they know you anyway. But outside the, your realm of really close family, keep this close to yourself. Because again, guys, if you say like, if you have three, four neighbors and they all know you're, pep you're preparing or you're having a you know, bunch of bags coming in with the food, they will kind of know. So you have to be a little bit, a bit more secret, but we'll do this in the other video. But basically just keep your prepping part to yourself. Uh, clearly, you can see I'm totally in breach of my own advice because I am in you know, a public eye. This is what it is. But for you guys, if you are just starting there, just keep it under the cover because you just don't know. And trust me, 
Hungry people could do desperate, desperate things, especially if they have a young dependent on them. So anyway, I am going to stop talking now. I do hope, guys, you, uh, maybe the new, neutral prepping or not anyway, hopefully you just find this somewhat a bit helpful and maybe get a little bit more understanding how I feel and how I deal with the whole situation anyway. So don't forget to um, thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.